the past few decades, we have learned a great deal about trauma, what it is, and how it occurs. We've learned how it impacts people, and ultimately, we've learned more about how to help individuals heal when a traumatic event takes place. In the U.S., we've witnessed large-scale traumatic events, such as the Columbine school shooting, Wedgwood church shooting, 9-11. We've seen hurricanes Katrina, Harvey, and Ida. We've watched wildfires ravage the Western United States. We've seen soldiers return from Iraq and Afghanistan struggling with PTSD. We've learned more about how trauma impacts a person's brain and body, but even with the growth in the field of understanding trauma, it still feels like we know so little. Traumatic events in our communities, in our country, and around the world impel us forward to learn more and more in the field about how to help those who are impacted. Various stories in scripture provide us with some basic information about the nature of trauma, how it impacts individuals, groups of people, and even entire nations. In this session, we'll take a brief glimpse at trauma in scripture. We will define trauma and PTSD, and we will consider how trauma impacts individuals, which really will involve looking at some of the symptoms of trauma. We will then look at the question of what contributes to whether or not a person will experience trauma. The Greek word trauma appears in Scripture both in the New Testament as well as in the Septuagint or the Greek translation of the Old Testament. In each occurrence, it tends to mean wound. The word appears three times in the New Testament. We find it in Luke 10, the story of the Good Samaritan, where the Samaritan bandages the injured man's wounds. Luke 20, we find it in the parable of the vineyard. In this account, the vineyard owner sends a third servant to those renting out the vineyard. The renters wound the servant and throw him out. In Acts 19, we find it in the story of the sons of Sceva who are attempting to usurp Paul's notoriety. An evil spirit attacks these sons of the chief priest and wounds them severely. Note that all three New Testament uses of the word are in books written by Luke, a physician. Luke would know about trauma and about the wounds that people experience. In the Old Testament, there is one very notable use of the word, which occurs in Isaiah 53 or the suffering servant passage. Isaiah 53, 5 says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole, and with his stripes we are healed. Notice that Jesus allowed himself to be wounded or to undergo extreme trauma to pay the price for our sins. I don't think the importance of this passage can be overemphasized, that our great high priest who understands all things that we experience was wounded or was traumatized for us. There are also many, many Bible stories about trauma. I will mention three briefly. One such story takes place in Exodus 12 when God sends the 10th plague on the Egyptians. In this plague, all firstborn males in the country die as God passes over the Israelites who have marked their doorways with the blood of the Passover lamb. This is an example of an extreme trauma on a national level. An understanding of the traumatic nature of this event explains why the Egyptians gave their best belongings to the Israelites as noted in Exodus 12, 35, and 36. In the fog of trauma, the Egyptians give away their best belongings. As the trauma fog begins to lift, they wonder what in the world they have done, and they actually race to retrieve their belongings and their slaves. A second account of trauma in Scripture is in the book of Job. In rapid succession, Job loses his livestock, his oxen, donkeys, sheep, and camels. He loses many of his servants, and then his ten children are killed as a strong wind causes the walls of their house to collapse. Job then has painful boils covering his body. His wife encourages him to curse God, and his friends blame him for what has taken place in his life. Job experienced what is called type 2 trauma or a multi-event trauma. 
A third example takes place with the disciples after the crucifixion. For the followers of Jesus, things went from festive at the Passover to startling at Jesus' arrest to horrifying at the crucifixion. Note that there are a variety of different ways that the followers responded after the crucifixion. We see some followers stay and watch, others scatter, some help with the body, some hide, and some actually go back to work. There's great variation in how individuals react to trauma, as can be seen in the followers of Jesus after the crucifixion. These passages are only a brief and limited example of the numerous pictures of trauma that show up in Scripture. Let's define trauma. At its most basic, trauma means wound. While wounds can be physical, they can also take place at an emotional level. So here is my definition of trauma. Trauma is an event outside of what is normally expected in the life of an individual, which breaks past normal coping and defense mechanisms and causes strong emotional pain. Thus, trauma has four key elements. Trauma involves an actual event. Trauma is not part of normal human experience. Trauma stresses or overwhelms normal coping and defense mechanisms. And last, trauma produces specific symptoms. What then distinguishes trauma from crisis? How are they alike or how are they different? A crisis could be an actual event, but it also could be just a person's perception. Trauma is caused by an actual event. A crisis may have a gradual onset. Traumatic events almost always happen suddenly or unexpectedly. A crisis may be resolved quickly. For instance, a child who is lost for three minutes in a store may be found, and the crisis is over at that point. Trauma effects tend to linger from days to months to maybe even years. A crisis tends to challenge normal coping mechanisms Trauma can easily overwhelm a person's coping mechanisms. There are a couple of different types of trauma, and it is helpful to understand these different types. Type 1 trauma is single event or single blow trauma. Examples of type 1 or single event trauma would be a, an accident, like a car accident, a plane crash, um, a single event natural disaster, like a tornado or a fire. It could involve person-to-person -person violence, like some kind of assault or attack. Or it could involve the sudden death of someone close. It's a single event that happens to a person. Type 2 is multiple event or multiple blow trauma. This could be repeated similar events, and a couple of examples of this would be molestation that a child experiences, or even some soldiers in wartime. A second type of type two would be recurring separate events. These are events that are traumatic in and of themselves, but which can happen in closer proximity to each other. A term that has become a, a very familiar term to many of us is post-traumatic stress disorder. Post-traumatic stress disorder is generally diagnosed when a person experiences a certain set of symptoms, including persistent memories or flashbacks of an event, numbness and avoiding stimuli that remind the person of the traumatic event, and a heightened state of central nervous system arousal. To be diagnosed with PTSD, a person has to experience these types of symptoms for more than 30 days. When trauma takes place, how does it impact individuals? Let's look at some of the common symptoms a person may experience following a traumatic event. Some symptoms hinder a person's ability to function cognitively. Examples of these would be when a person has difficulty concentrating, and that can even be on fairly basic kind of tasks. Having flashbacks, Flashbacks are unwanted or intrusive memories of an event 
which often occur like looking at a snapshot or looking at a movie of the event. Overgeneralization of stimuli, and this would be seeing, hearing, or experiencing things that remind you of the traumatic event. Some symptoms interact with the person's emotions. One example of this is numbness. Numbness is actually the most common symptom that people will tell me they are experiencing following a traumatic event. They will say, I just feel numb or I don't feel anything. Anger is another common emotion. Anger can be directed at self, it can be directed at others, it can be directed at a perpetrator, it can also be directed at God, at family, or many others. Sadness and, and depression can be a common symptom. Uh, this can be just a general feeling down, or it can be wanting to die or to disappear. Fear, and fear can be either a general sense of fear or fear of very specific kinds of things. Guilt is another common emotion. Uh, this often shows up as what is called survivor's guilt, which can be feeling guilty for surviving or feeling like you could have done something to prevent the traumatic event from taking place. Hypervigilance is a hyper alertness and hyper awareness of one's surroundings. Symptoms can be behavioral. Behavioral symptoms are expressed in how the individuals go through their regular daily activities. Sleep disturbance is an example of a behavioral symptom. People may have trouble going to sleep, they may have trouble staying asleep, they may have nightmares, they may sleep but wake up still feeling exhausted and not feeling rested. Eating disturbances are common. Some people overeat following a traumatic event, other people are not hungry and won't eat. Difficulty completing routine tasks, and this may be something simple like doing household chores, it may be something like going to the grocery store and not being able to remember why you went and what you were supposed to get. Acting out types of symptoms. Uh, people act out in a number of ways following traumatic events. Drugs and alcohol would be really common. Uh, acting out sexually, spending money, overeating, self-harm. There are lots of ways that, that people act out following a traumatic event. Spiritual symptoms impact how a person tries to live out their faith. Questions about God's existence. A person may think, for instance, there must not be a God because how could God let the traumatic event happen? Individuals may have questions about God's character. They may tell you following the traumatic event, I thought God was a certain way, now I can't tell what he's like. Individuals may have questions about God's location. And the questions may have to do with where was God when this difficult event was happening? Was God there with me? Was God somewhere else? Was God looking the other way? They may have trouble with, with God's location. Anger at God is a common spiritual symptom. Individuals may have difficulty with religious practices or religious expressions. Following traumatic events, individuals may have difficulty with church attendance or worship. They may have trouble praying, or they may have trouble opening their Bible and reading it or going to Bible study. And this is especially true if the trauma has taken place in a religious or a church kind of setting. Individuals may have low tolerance for religious shallowness or for simplistic religious answers following a traumatic event. A person may experience relational symptoms, and these impact a person's relationships. An example would be relational withdrawal, a person pulling away from important relationships. Another person may have difficulty being alone and may seem to be compelled toward others. Individuals may experience relationship strain where even close relationships seem to, to have strain. A person may think that no one really understands them or no one cares about them. Sometimes people develop unhealthy relational attachments following traumatic events. A couple of key comments about symptoms, and these are really important in understanding how symptoms take place following trauma. First of all, symptoms vary greatly from person to person. Two people can go through the exact same trauma event and have very different trauma expressions. And secondly, symptoms may emerge immediately or they may be delayed in onset. 
It's not unusual following a large-scale trauma, an extensive trauma, for a person to have symptoms emerge three to six months after the trauma event. Now let's deal with the question of why trauma can impact people differently. Why can two individuals go through the same event or a similar event and be impacted differently? Here are some factors that actually influence the impact of trauma. First is the severity of and proximity to the trauma event. Trauma is more likely to be severe if a person is threatened with loss of life or if other individuals are killed or injured. The longer a traumatic event lasts, the more likely a person will be impacted. A second factor is a person's functioning prior to the trauma event. A person who is emotionally and physically depleted prior to trauma is more likely to be impacted. Third, prior unresolved exposure to a trauma can impact a person. A person with unaddressed or unresolved prior trauma is more likely to be impacted. Fourth, a person's level of support before, during, and following the event can impact the extent of the event. A person who has extensive healthy support systems tend to have mitigation of some of the effects of trauma. And a person's level of training for traumatic events plays a role. Those trained to deal with traumatic events, i.e. medical personnel, first responders, uh, individuals of this nature may not be impacted to the same extent as those who have never been around a trauma situation before. We live in a world where traumatic events will take place. When we understand what trauma is and how it impacts individuals, we position ourselves to best address trauma when it does happen to those within our ministry spheres. In our next session, we'll consider another key concept, that of loss.